based on what somebody told you, but that somebody was trustworthy according to what your parents and the head teacher had told you. So when they when you were taught about science, you were told that the teacher is you know, responsible, they are qualified, but you didn't go out in the field, you didn't dig and see the fossils, you didn't do the experimentation, you didn't go and speak to the philosophers. You can say that about anything though. Not necessarily. I'll tell you why. I read a fantastic book by Bill Bryson, The Short History of Anybody. anybody. Have anybody read that? The Short History of Yeah, yeah it's a very good book. It's a very good book. When he does that, he goes and delves off and he finds out why we have all these answers in science. And unless I'm going around and becoming an expert in 25,000 different fields, then how would I, I've got to at some point, trust some information, and of course you are correct. Yeah. You can question what we actually learn in the, in the British education system. Yeah, it's only a fraction of what of what they want you to know. But then that's when we're going to go into something else there. Yeah, we'll but put that on ice for but now. Every, but everything's an opinion though. Everything. I mean, I'm pretty well read for somebody from in the northeast of England. But I still haven't got all that knowledge. It's impossible for me. So at some point, of course, I'm going to have to trust some of this information. Agreed. Come towards me. The way that I mitigate that is by having multiple sources. I'll, I'll, read, I'll do podcast. I'll read a book. I'll try and draw a general picture of all of these things, and that's what led me here today to listen to you. Very good. I appreciate that, Stephen. I, I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying this conversation. You're touching on topics that are so fascinating and so interesting. So now, what you've hit upon is called testimony. Yeah. So, and what you've also done is you've said, in order for me to mitigate a mistake, I need to hear it from multiple sources. But what you haven't said is how you can now transcend that. Now, the way you can transcend that, maybe you might be able to transcend that one generation. Now, how would you transcend that? You, you now have to be dependent upon manuscripts. Now, how do I get a manuscript from Eurasia? And you know, how old would it be? 100, 200 years old? Then how do I check its authenticity? Now, again, it will, it will be reduced and it has to come to a stop. Now, as in Islam, our testimony is completely different. Yeah, and this is what makes Islam's Quran voracious compared to any other book. And we have a three-pronged approach in which we prove the veracity of the Quran. Number one, the Quran has been preserved orally. Number two, it has been preserved by a live language. And number three, it has been preserved by manuscripts. Yeah, now what I mean by that is if you compare all of the religions, Stephen, for example, let's look at the New Testament of the Christians. It's revealed in, well, Jesus spoke Aramaic. So who knows, but I mean, they're saying it's in Greek. Is Greek a, one of the top five languages? Is it spoken generally? No. Let's look at Hebrew of the Old Testament. Is it spoken generally? It's not. Let's look at Sanskrit of the Hindus. Is it spoken? Is it accessible? It's actually not accessible. Jesus' language of Aramaic is actually not accessible. Let's look at Arabic. It is. It's actually at number four or number five. It's actually, it actually fluctuates. It's a live language. Let's look at manuscripts. Muslims are the only ones who claim to have manuscripts of the original Quran. And we make the claim it's the same book that was there at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Could you say that within the language, definitive fact that there's never ever been even a slang word introduced in, in, in um, that language ever? So there's never been an abbreviation ever in that language. That's because I have a friend who's from, yeah. he's uh, from Miami and he's Cuban. And I travel around the world with him. And he speaks Spanish. But his Spanish, and this is what he says, he says when he refer the self to Spanish, but to totally different Spanish. And it's yeah. different to the Spanish what is spoken within Spain. So could you say with 100% clarity, and I do understand this, I have read that, that in order to preserve um, Islamic practices or uh, fear that you, you read the, um, the Quran so that you use more word by word to help you preserve that. But can you say that there's no difference ever? There's never ever been even a different vowel or word or pronunciation or one bit of slang in that language. Very good. Not one. Very good. As in no altering, because remember the universe evolved, everything. So. Yeah, and that's why, Stephen, I'm giving you a three pronged approach. Number one is the living language Arabic. Let's keep that to the side by now, yeah? Because Arabic itself is accessible to everybody, no worries. Brilliant, fantastic. Manuscript evidence and verbal evidence, yeah? 
Now, when it comes to something verbal, now, can you verify that since we've been here, the crowd has changed? There are brothers that have come and some brothers have gone and some brothers I don't know here. Yeah? Now, I can tell you confidently, I can read a passage of the Quran, I can introduce something in this passage in front of you and they'll be able to correct me. Okay. Qul huwallahu ahmad. Is that right or wrong? Qul huwallahu ahmad. Is that right or wrong? Qul huwallahu ahmad. Right or wrong? Wrong. What's the correct one? Qul huwallahu ahad. Qul huwallahu ahad. Qul huwallahu So verbal preservation, it's, this is a beautiful way in which the Quran is the only book that claims perfect preservation. In fact, in the, Sunday, in the Sunday Times, there was a poll that was done in 1997 of vicars. They asked vicars to regurgitate the Ten Commandments. And two out of three vicars struggled. Now these are a few lines. But when it comes to the Quran, I think it's like 9,000 or 11,000 lines of the Quran, depending on you know, how big the size of the Quran is. You've got Muslims as young as six. In Palestine, there was a girl as young as six that has memorized it. And just like I've proven to you here, Stephen, my friend, this is why Islam is special because Islam or the religion from God naturally is supposed to be accessible to everybody. I can't give a highfalutin uh, argument that, you know, us academics can understand, but somebody else would struggle. It needs to be something that a rational individual can come and go, you know what, that makes sense. So in terms of a live language, we've proven that, okay, the Quran is something that's special. In terms of manuscript, the oldest manuscript that we have is actually located in this country, in Birmingham. It's, it's actually four folios. You can um, YouTube, uh, you can Google this when you go home. It's a BBC article. It's actually one of the top three when you Google it. Oldest Quran manuscript. It's in this country. Muslims, it's not even a Muslim country. Birmingham and the carbon dating was actually done by the University of Oxford. They've carbon dated it. And you can check, I've got cameras here. Everything that I'm saying, you can go home and you can check it. So it was carbon dated and they did exactly what you said. They put the Quran that we have and they compared it with the folios. And Stephen, me standing here, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm telling you the founding that they found from, I think it's 645, 645 AD. They said there is a hundred percent word accuracy. You can check this yourself. That's the oldest manuscript. You know what I've done? I've actually printed it out. Are you happy that, that manuscript is in the UK? Do you know why I am happy with that? It's because some people, when I'm speaking to them, Stephen, when I ask them, where do you think this manuscript is? They're going to say, oh, it's probably in a Muslim country. Oh, it's probably you guys are probably saying this and it's probably done by your guys. The fact that it's in a non-Muslim country, I think it objectively uh, is in favor of a true seeker it makes it easier for them to distinguish and say you know what okay i can accept that now let me ask you stephen what do you think about these things that i've told you about how the quran has been preserved as opposed to yeah as as opposed to the other books what do you think about what i've just said i think that's a, I, I took note of that, the fact that i've already acknowledged the fact that you got these three brothers here, and you uh, use the whatever. Um, a verse of the Quran, yeah. Yeah, yeah so brilliant. That preservation is there. But for me, I still, then, as you were speaking about that, I start thinking about the original question, which was about falling and up on camera, which was about um, religion and a state. And how do we separate them too? And how we got the, like, say we got the scripture within the UK, which is a, a freedom loving country and a secular country. Now, when, we, when you were speaking about, when you were originally speaking about homosexuality, and you should also, obviously, freedom of speech, if you should use it in time to say that, it's not something you agree with. So, would you say that? The way that Islam is taught in the UK, could that evolve and could that change? That's what you're scared of. Maybe. 
I, I think what you've proven, Stephen, is that the, the way Islam is taught does need to be changed because when you said yourself that the founder of Islam is the Prophet Muhammad and then there's, there's certain other misconceptions that get that gets put forward, unfortunately and sadly, Orthodox Muslims are not consulted when it comes to the curriculum that we have and when it comes to the relevant stuff that's actually being taught. The stuff that's taught is the sort of stuff that's in line with the, the liberal curriculum, which again, constantly changes based upon the whimsical desires of the people. But if you introduce something into a liberal society, then that will, that will change. It just that's the way it happens. And the example what I give, I've got a I've got a partner who's Indian, right? And my family's from West India. Nice. West Indies. Maybe when they first came across, they wouldn't have wanted to acknowledge that relationship. But eventually, at each generation, it changes. And what if you think that or her grandfather was gonna come from India and come here and just keep it that way, it's, it's pretty much impossible. Things have to change. That's a, that's a good point. That's Things a good point. Things have to change at some point. But so, so you could have um, someone who studies uh, Islam over here, and it might change for them. But when you say something changes, Stephen, why would something change? Because Correct. Because, because, you, because you've introduced that into a society what's liberal. Right. So, so in other words, what you're saying is, and correct me if I'm wrong. If something, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, by yeah, the way. Yeah, no, 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 problem, no problem. Problem. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Because I've that. seen this even within my personal relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things will change. Yeah. When people come here, things will change. Yeah. You can still have certain things, but it will change or deviate or maybe it's come up with something even better. Yeah. The thing is, but you, you've actually, I'm good, you actually stopped me and you finished your sentence because you said, what if we were to deviate and come up with something better? But that's assuming that you believe that the thing before is not better, that it is not the best it can be. And Stephen, think of Stephen, think of it this way. I believe in God. I believe He is perfect in every facet. He's the most kind, the most merciful, the all knowledgeable. And if He's given me a book, He's given me a way of life. That way of life is the best. No Larry, no Mr. Singh, no Mr. Wong, no whatever can come and start telling me, oh yeah, by the way, uh, why can't we add this in? H hang on, Mr. Wong or Mr. Larry or Mr. Singh. You're telling me that you have more insight than God? You're telling me you have more what insight I'm than the... <laughs> what I'm saying, I think, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying, when you introduce something in a liberal society, yeah. it will change. Look for instance the capitalist system, right? Yeah. The West has had a hegemony over that for as long as possible. And all of a sudden, China's come up with a deviation. And that now actually threatens the hegemony of the West. Yeah. Because they've blended maybe state with capitalism. Yeah. And that's a scary thing for some people. Yeah. Because maybe it's, it's, do you understand what I'm getting? I do, there? I do. So yeah. they, they've come up it's with interesting. a form of capitalism. It's fascinating, yeah. But their capitalism what's in better could be more successful. But what we're saying, Stephen, is... Or more. I don't know. I'm not... I'm not, yeah. I'm not um, I I'm absolutely understand. I'm not saying I'm from the left. Right? Yes, I'm yes. just giving that as an example. Yeah, no, fine. So when you drop something into some other area, yeah. it will evolve. Get back to the question again. Yeah. It will change. It will do what needs to be done. So, yes, of course, we have them three principles, what you've said, regarding... Um, the preservation the of the Quran. But when you introduce whatever that is, of course you're going to have people who love God and who want to preserve something this way. But ultimately, there will always be other people. Just a bit like when we're talking about the general relativity and the quantum mechanics, they will always have to be the opposite. There will always have to be something drawn on the other side. That's the way it is. If I was to say to you, oh, what would you say? Or what could you say? If I said, oh, down. Down. If I said, meal. You said? Male, a female, yeah, yeah. strong, weak, dark, light. That's not some superficial um, you know, bullshit. That is the law and order of the universe. Stephen, you're, you're still falling in the same trap. And let me give, let me, let me elucidate this trap in, in, in a way of an example. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. You have a big puzzle, yeah? A big puzzle that has been put together. As human beings... But that puzzle doesn't have edges. Let me give you an example. Let's stick with this for now, yeah? You have a big puzzle picture. As human beings, we see things 
like we see one piece two piece three piece because as human beings our faculties of seeing understanding are limited is there a fourth and, dimension i have to say <laughs> is there a fourth dimension if there is a fourth dimension god knows the fourth dimension and he knows everything that exists and bearing all that in mind he's given that, us that there's there laws you think there might be a fourth dimension you know what stephen if there is a fourth dimension, I welcome it. <laughs> if there's a fifth dimension, I welcome it. It doesn't change my belief in God. In fact, God and religion and science fit together. They actually marry each other. And that's why, and that's what we were also speaking in the golden age of Islam, a lot of these discoveries were done by Muslims. And a lot of scientific discoveries and sociological discoveries the Muslims actually contributed to. And coming back to this example, it's exactly this, that as Muslims, or sorry, as human beings, we see the pixel, Allah sees the picture. So when a law comes down, the law takes everything into consideration and then the law comes down. But can we really see? How are we able to really see what's in front of us? We're question, not. God is. It? But Stephen, God is. And that's why I started and that's why we needed a beginning to determine if there is a creator or not. Because that's integral that if you believe in God, then you believe in objective morality. And if you believe in objective morality, which again, by the way, can't be proven by science or by liberalism. Yeah, you, no liberal person can come in this park here right now on camera and say this is right and this is wrong. 100% and just to go back to something, get back to physics and science though. Yeah. Science does actually believe that if you had a pendulum, your pendulum, and you let it dangle, it would yeah. never ever be exactly down the middle. Do you know that? It cannot, physically, they cannot say that it is exactly dead center. It has to be, even if it's a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth, to the left and to the right. They can't see that. What does that, what do you think that type of thing suggests? Shall I tell you what that suggests? That suggests that that pendulum had somebody to start it off to begin with. And, and so then it keeps going, doesn't it? It, keep, it goes on and goes on and goes on. It, ke it keeps going. Can I just answer the pendulum thing that you said? Because that was a good point. A good point yeah, can I just finish it? And then we can answer your friend's point. He, he got upset. Uh, but I didn't want to interrupt because we're having a conversation, isn't it? So the pendulum, you said it goes on forever. I would disagree because by the laws of the same science that you're talking, eventually it would cause corrosion. And that metal would corrode. And eventually, based on the other variables that you have, that pendulum can actually be destroyed. And even if that destruction happens by our sun exploding, turning into a supernova or whatnot, it has an end date. No one in their right mind would say that pendulum will go on ad infinitum forever. Yes, but what do you never, think about that? It can never ever be straight down the middle. No problem. I, I'm happy with that. that. Yeah. No, I like that. You like that though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I did like yeah? that. Yeah? You like that. Look, I'm going to have to get up, boys. Oh, it was so, so nice took, speaking to you. We took, we took some good things there, didn't we? Yeah, it was brilliant. Did you enjoy that one? There's some good points raised, wasn't there? Which part of English are you going? Newcastle. Or Newcastle. New, Newcastle. North East. Stephen, I told you, you'll enjoy it, and if you want, you move away, you walk away, and stuff like that. Where I find you? Where, will, this, will you put this on YouTube? Yeah, so it's, it's going to be on a few channels. I don't know who started when. You could, uh, I don't know who, which camera was here before. I don't know. I think uh, Salam, yeah, it's going to be on Salam. But what, do, what does he type in? Because there's like three Salams, isn't it? No, it won't, it won't. Yeah, Salam Speakers Corner. On will that you, channel. Will you be on there? I, I will be on there speaking to you. Have My you channel is challenge? different. Yeah, it's called Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah means smile to paradise. You like that, you know yeah? This is, you're going to love this. Go you know on. One of my jobs actually is Go on. working for a company called the Paradise Challenge. <laughs> and what I guess what that is. I guess what that is. What what is, it, is? it is, it's a photo shoot for supermodels and I do the security and fitness. So I do smile when I'm at paradise. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually the truth, you know. That's awesome, bro. Respect that, bro. I respect this conversation. And bro, 
So I'm on there if you want to leave a comment or message me on Instagram or even if you want to come on Speaker's Corner and have another combo, you're always more than welcome. So, so, salam, salam, salam. So Salam, S-A-L-A-M. So that's Salam Speaker's Corner. They've got loads of videos. My one is uh, Smile to Jannah. Smile, Smile to, to Paradise. How do you spell the last word? Jannah, J-A-N-N-A-H. Smile to Jannah. Yeah. Okay. I think we're doing good there, you know. We've done excellent, bro. Especially the science thing was fantastic. I'll, I'll, I'll have, I'll have, a look, I'll have another, another go with you sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. 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 I know. We're winning all sorts. We're winning yeah, the that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. We've pulled some good shit out there. Yeah, bro. A lot. need that, that needs unpacking. It can't. Like, if I give you a half hour answer. Have, have you got a podcast or anything? No. I don't know. Just on that channel, you see me discussing all sorts of things. But I do it in a humorous. Know. 